Welcome to tutorial on the IntelliGel Microscale 2 module. The Microscale 2 is a Eurorack module, which is a quantizer. So if you're not familiar with quantizers, basically they turn uh, continuous voltage into musical divisions. Uh, so for example, you can run any kind of voltage through it and it'll lock it down to a musical scale. So it's helpful to understand basic music theory, nothing too crazy, but you should be aware of what a scale is, what a root note is. So a root note is just the first note of a scale and then different scales had have different scale tones in there uh, which are just different sets of interval musical intervals that uh, create the scale. So the micro scale lets you uh, create your own scale by defining which notes you want to quantize to but it also comes with a series of banks and preset scales that you can choose uh, so you don't have to memorize uh, how scales are actually created. The other concept to be aware of is the concept of an interval. And an interval is just a spacing between two notes uh, on a musical scale. And the other two concepts that you should be familiar with that are referenced a lot is the concept of chromatic and diatonic. So chromatic just means that it's composed of all semitones. So for example, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, etc., all fall in the chromatic scale versus diatonic, uh, which generally in this case just means notes that fall in a musical scale. So for example, if you have the C major scale, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, uh, diatonic notes would mean notes that fall uh, within that scale in that particular example. All right, so let's quickly go over the front panel here. If you see on the left here, you have a series of buttons which are black and white, and these represent standard keys on a piano keyboard. So if you tilt your head, you can see that over here we start with a C, then you have your C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, A sharp, A, B flat, and B. And this is the most basic mode of operation is you can actually just plug in whatever notes you want and then those are the notes that will be quantized. And it always grabs the upper bound. So for example here, if these are the notes I have selected, and I play an E flat here, it'll actually convert that E flat into an E, which is the closest upper bound uh, note that is picked here. And that's what it means to quantize, basically. It'll grab whatever voltage you put in representing any of these notes, and it'll make sure that it only outputs the notes that you've selected here, and it'll find the closest note to the note that's actually being played. So that is the basic operation of these buttons here. They just function as a keyboard, which you can toggle notes on and off of. They also double as setting buttons. So here on the right, you have a list of text next to it. And these are basically shortcuts that define all kinds of different settings you can set. And we'll get over those later. For now, let's just go over the basic front panel. So below the buttons here, you have these four jacks. Two of them are inputs, two of them are outputs. The outputs are defined by this black box. And then you have this little switch here, which we'll go over. So the main jack here is the input, which is labeled one volt per octave. And volt per octave is just a convention used in uh, a modular synths that define how to interface with pitch-based modules, so something in a Western scale. To the bottom of that input, we have this output A here. Output A will output the quantized version of whatever is fed into here. So again, if you feed a series of notes in here that are, for example, just chromatic notes, and you have a major scale selected here, for example, then the output here would spit out only the major scale notes, which correspond to quantized versions of this input here. And to the right of output A, we have output B here. And this is configurable, but in general, it outputs an interval based on output A. So for example, if you set it to always output a major third, if you put a C here, it'll output an E here, and etc. And you can configure this to be either chromatic or diatonic, which means that you can actually have output B be part of the scale quantized, but relative to some interval based on the output that's coming out of A here. So again, just to quickly summarize, this is your input, so you would feed your voltage into here from a sequencer, an LFO, or any kind of voltage source. Out of here, you would get a quantized version of that based on the scale you have selected here. And then out of here, you would get an interval relative to what's coming out of here. So you can play a harmony, basically. 
And finally here we have a shift input, which is a CV input. And this also is configurable, so you can have it control the interval of A, the interval of B, uh, or both together, or it can change the root node of the scale with any kind of CV signal. So for example, you can plug an LFO into here to change an offset of A, depending on what's coming in to here. Uh, you can also have it offset B only relative to A. So you can have A play your standard melody, you can have a harmony coming out of here, and then you can offset the harmony, which you can get really nice melodic lines out of this module. And finally, above here, we have a little switch that controls how the shift CV input behaves. So you can either, either have it be unipolar or bipolar. Unipolar would accept a 0 to 10 volt, and bipolar is negative 5 to plus 5. And let's quickly go over the summary of the settings you have here and how to access them. And then we'll go in detail and see what each one does when we go over the demo. But basically, the general idea here is that next to each button, you have a little text. And to access that, you hold the button for a second. So for example, if I want to access the menu, I would hold the first button for a second. And then you have these black things here, which are independent menus. So if I wanted to access the interval, I would hold the interval button, get into the interval menu, make a setting, and then it resets back to default. The default when you're not in any menu is just your basic active scale selector. So you can define what scale notes are currently being quantized. So you have one set of menus which you access through this uh, settings button, which is your first button here. So if I hold this for a second, it turns into a little settings menu, and then you can read this little red um, options here. So for example, the first three buttons here select the scale shift mode. The next four select the shift target. And then finally, you have these two buttons here to change the mode of output B here. So the first two here are settings for the shift CV input here. So you can select at what stage the quantization uh, of the shift happens, whether it's before the scale quantize, whether it's in scale diatonic, or whether it happens after uh, scale quantization. The next thing, you can set the shift target. So this assigns where the shift CV is being routed to. You can have it control A, B, both A and B, or the root node. And finally, the last setting in the menu option here is B mode. So this determines how output B behaves. And you can choose between chromatic or diatonic, as we mentioned before. And then you have these other independent menus here. You have the interval menu, which you set which interval you want to be outputted on output B here. You have root, which allows you to change and transpose the scale. And then below that, we have this bank feature. So the module can actually save 12 banks, and each bank can have up to 12 scales. So if you want to customize a scale and save this, for example, you can store that in one of the banks. Below that, you have a scale option, and this allows you to load one of the preset scales that come preloaded. And then you have a save option, which allows you to save all your banks to memory. So this is important. This, By default, all the settings you do are volatile. If you want them to persist after you turn off the power, you have to actually save it to the EEPROM inside. And then finally, you have this little X marker here, which allows you to reset the scale. All right, now that we've covered the basics of the front panel, let's do a little basic demo so you can hear what all the options can do. So off screen here, I have a Kilpatrick Phenol synth, which I'm going to be using to demonstrate the sounds here because it has two oscillators that we can control. So I'm just going to feed my output A into one of the oscillators. And then I can turn up the volume here. And you can hear we just have a droning sound. And this will be a good basis for us to demonstrate the, the module here. So the first thing we're going to do is just demonstrate the basic active scale. So we're just going to configure the notes here, which will determine what notes are being quantized. We're not going to touch any of the settings, the menus, the output B. We'll do that later. All right, so for my uh, volt per octave input here, I'm just going to feed a static DC voltage here from the maths. So I'm going to take channel 2 here and plug it into there. And then I'm going to turn up the volume here of my sound. And basically what this allows me to do now is I have a voltage out of here uh, from 0 to 10 volts, which I can just manually control. That way we can hear what's going on.
and I'm just changing a continuous voltage out of here and you can tell now it's being quantized. I only have one node selected here so it's only giving me octaves of the note C and if I want to add more notes here I can just select more so for example if I wanted um, the G note as well so now we have C and G and you can see in the module here whatever no light is green means that's the current note that's being quantized and all the red lights means all the other notes that are um, in the scale so I can add more notes And while we're here, let's demo the basic um, bank and scale and saving options. And then we'll get into the output B and, uh, and the shift input later. So to select a bank, I can just hold bank for a second. And then it gives me a choice here of all the banks that are available. The empty lights means they're empty banks. So I can just pick a bank here. And then I can pick a different scale the same way. I can hold scale. I have 12 different scales. So I can pick this one, for example. And you can see it just picks a, and loads a different scale. So that's a basic way to just load a bank into memory here. If you want to actually load it from the EEPROM, so if you've saved a set of banks uh, before and you shut down the module, you can hold the bank button for two seconds and that'll load all the data from the little chip inside. And then moving down to the save, it behaves the same way. You can hold save for one second, pick a slot here to save. It'll save the scale in the current bank at a given slot, but it won't actually save it to memory. So if you boot off the module, you'll lose all your data. So then to save that to the actual EEPROM inside, you have to hold save for three seconds or two seconds, sorry and that'll actually persistently save it so you can have it later. And then we have this little X at the bottom which is handy for clearing the active scale. So you hold that for one second, then you can see it's prompting you to push the button again. You push that button and it cleared the scale and then we're back to having just one note here. All right, so now that we covered the basics of the input and the output A, let's cover output B here. And if you remember output B just spits out an interval based on output A and some other settings here. So I have a second oscillator in my phenol here. So I'm gonna plug in output B to control that second oscillator. I'm going to manually pick a major scale here and then I'm going to set an interval for B here. So I hold interval. Right now it's set to the third here so I'll leave it at that. And then I'll bring up my two oscillators. And you can hear the notes the interval is actually musically spaced apart. I'm going to pan them out a little bit. And then you can change the interval. And if you remember, you can change the mode of the output B here. So if you hold the settings, B mode is down here. So you can choose between chromatic or diatonic. If you choose diatonic, if you remember, that means it'll keep notes in the current scale. So in diatonic mode, the interval determines um, the step in the scale. So if you say two in the interval and you're in diatonic mode, it means the second note in the current scale. Whereas chromatic, for example, if you set the interval to two, it means two semitones. So right now we have it set to diatonic. I can switch it to chromatic, for example. In which case our interval here just determines a chromatic offset. And if I switch it back to diatonic, I can change my interval. And again, here I'm just using the maths as a, with the DC offset. So I'm just manually turning this knob and that's outputting the voltages. 
But in practice, you can use LFOs and sequencers, uh, envelope generators, anything that generates a CV signal. You can feed it into here. Uh, you can use random signals. And the beauty here is that it'll convert it to musical notes. So any kind of chaotic, weird sounding voltage now can become something very musical when you run it through a quantizer like this. And the other thing we can cover is the root note here. So if I hold this button, uh, now I'm able to change the relative uh, notes. So for example, if I have C here, if I push a D here, it'll change the scale relatively two semitones up. And now I've transposed. So now that we've covered the basic input output and the interval output B here, let's go over the shift uh, input, which is your control voltage input, which you can assign to different things. And this is definitely the most tricky piece of the microscale, um, at least to understand, because it has a lot of nuance and different settings. But basically, it's governed by these two settings here. So you have your scale shift and shift target. So scale shift determines at what stage um, the shifting happens relative to the quantization. So the quantization in here happens in two stages. First, you'd have chromatic quantization. So it converts a random, or it converts the input voltage into chromatic notes. So you get all the semitones and all the keys on the piano, for example. And then the second stage it goes through is the scale quantization. And the scale quantization is what actually takes the chromatic notes and maps them to your active scale here. So depending on what notes you have selected, it'll make sure that only one of those notes gets picked. And so the scale shift settings here, you have pre, diatonic, and post. This is relative to the scale quantization piece. So it'll always do the chromatic quantization. And then depending on what you have set here, the shifting voltage will be applied either uh, within the scale or before the scale quantization or after scale quantization. So for the pre-scale mode, it'll apply the shifting before the qu scale quantization. So for example, if you input a C note and you shift this three, you'll get a D sharp out of it because it'll shift three uh, semitones up. And only then will it apply the scale quantization. So it'll run your scale quantize on your D sharp, which will turn it into an E uh, if you have a C major scale set, for example. If you have it set to diatonic here, then the shifting will actually be relative to the scale notes. So if you, sh if you set your shift to three, for example, it'll grab the third note in the major scale when it's shifting. And finally, if you have it set to post quantization, then first it'll quantize the note and then it'll apply a shift on that, if that makes sense. And it's worth noting in the pre-scale mode that the output B uh, interval is computed based on the original note coming in before it gets shifted. So if you get a uh, note coming in here and you're in pre-mode, the shift will apply, for example, if you put a C in and the shift results in an E. So the B interval would be computed based on the C, the original note, not the E, the shifted note. So all these nuances may sound complicated, but I think it's important to just realize the basics of what's going on here. So you have an input, which is your main voltage source, and that always gets quantized and output of output A here. And then B is the interval based on that. What shift allows you to do, it sort of runs in parallel, is it allows you to offset notes based on some control voltage. So you can either offset A or B or both A and B. And you can also offset the root note, uh, which is one of the options here. So that brings me to the second set of options you have for the shift uh, parameter here, which is the target. And this allows you to assign whether you're shifting A, B, A and B or the root note. This allows you a lot of creativity with output B here because output B has an interval that is being set, but it also potentially has a shift. So you have two sets of offsets that you can apply to it and you can create all kinds of unique melodies with just a simple uh, random voltage source, for example. All right, so I've disconnected output B here. So now we just have our original voltage here. All right, so I have a C major scale here. I've set my shift target to be A, so whatever I have, whatever voltage I have coming into here will offset my voltage A, or the output at A. And finally, I've set the scale shift to pre-scale. And what this means is that whatever input I have here will first get quantized uh, chromatically. Uh, and then the shift will be applied. So if I put a voltage into here, it'll offset that chromatic quantized signal. 
And then finally, it'll quantize it to the musical scale, which I have selected here as a C major scale. And now I'm just going to plug a voltage into the shift here. And for this, I'm going to pick output three of the maths here. And I'm going to set my switch here to bipolar, which responds to negative five to five voltage, which maps perfectly to the channel three of the maths here, which, which is this uh, attenuverter, which goes from negative five to five. So I'm just going to plug that in here. Now if I bring it back up, so I have my normal signal here, and then I have my shift here. And then we can change this to diatonic. And then post scale. And again, if you remember post scale, first it'll do the scale quantization and then apply the shift. So the notes that result from that aren't necessarily going to be in the scale. All right, so that gives you an idea of what the shift can do to offset output A here. So I'm going to plug my oscillator 2 into output B again. And this time I'm going to change my scale to diatonic for the shift. And I'm going to make it shift output B this time. And output B is the interval of output A. So in this case, my shift voltage will be controlling the interval uh, relatively within the scale because I have it set to diatonic. The other interesting thing we can do is we can change the root of the scale uh, with the shift input here. And so I can select root as my target here. Which is a little more chaotic. And then the other option we have is A and B together. And so now that we've heard what it sounds like with just static voltages, let's make it a little more interesting by feeding some LFOs. So I'm going to transition my main input to be channel one on the maths here, which I've set the cycle mode, so it'll be an LFO. And then the shift input, I have the second cycle from channel four here. And then I can gradually bring those in with these knobs here. So I can bring in channel one, which will be my main oscillator, or the main voltage. So this LFO effectively is controlling the, as if it was the pitch control, but the pitch is being quantized to C major, so it sounds more musical than just the continuous uh, pitch of the oscillator changing. And then finally I can put channel 4, which I have another LFO here, to control the shift input here. And I have the shift input set to diatonic and channel B. So it'll be quantized within the scale and it'll offset whatever's coming out of B here. So we'll be changing the interval and the harmony of the second oscillator. Of course, now I have just a standard C major scale, but I can remove some notes and make it a little more interesting. And I can turn it into a minor.
There's also a hidden mode which allows you to control which scale is being played and select the current scale via the shift input here. And you can get to that by holding scale for two seconds. And now the control voltage here actually will switch one of the 12 scales in the current bank. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the micro scale can do. Uh, so again, you can use it as a pretty simple, straightforward quantizer. You can ignore all the menu settings. You can just plug in a voltage into input, uh, the volt per octave input here, and you'll get a quantized output out of output A. You just plug in the notes you want to be in your scale, and you're good to go. So you have a lot of interesting modulation options. And as you can hear, just with uh, simple maths and two LFOs, you can get all kinds of nice melodic sounds coming out of here because it'll quantize your chaos and turn it into something musical. All right, thanks so much for watching. So if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Uh, in my channel, I do all kinds of things with synthesizers. Uh, so I hope to do more Eurorack tutorials and demos in general, as well as play around with uh, fixed architecture synths and other gear. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.